The Polish state, born at the end of the 10th century, also used the mission of the conversion into Christianity in order to expand its influence in Prussian and Jotwingian territories. In 997, King Boleslav I, the Brave of Poland, supported the attempts of Adalbert Wojtech, St. Adalbert of Prague, to convert the Prussians into Christianity. In 1009, he also supported Bruno's mission. The 12th century conflicts between Poles and Prussians often resulted in the ravaging of frontier lands. The Dukes of Mazovia were especially active, as they had the permission of Pope Honorius III to carry out raids with the Knights of Poland Minor against the Prussians. However, these raids did not change anything. The Prussian problem, as it was called, had to be solved by a military order of the Knights of Dobzhin, established in Poland. However, it turned out to be powerless too. The Prussians besieged the Knights in their own castle of Dobzhin. In 1226, Duke Conrad I of Mazovia invited the Teutonic Order, which was expelled from Hungary. Many present-day Polish historians believe that this political move of Conrad was one of the greatest geopolitical mistakes. Conquests of the Teutonic Order that started in 1231 dealt a heavy blow to the Balts and to the Slavs. Throughout the whole history of Poland and Lithuania, the establishment and the expansion of the Teutonic state influenced bilateral relations as well as the relations with other countries. The interests of Poland and of the Lithuanian state established in 1253 crossed in the Baltic lands of Jutvingians and Prussians as well. During the 13th century, the Lithuanians eight times attacked Polish duchies. Polish dukes felt threatened by the rapid growth of the Teutonic state. A new political trend emerged in the Lithuanian-Polish relations, that is they formed unions against the common enemy, the Teutonic order. Such a union could have been concluded between King Mindogas and Duke Casimir of Kujawia. Vladislaus I of Poland, who restored the United Kingdom of Poland, also concluded a military union with Gediminas in 1325. The turning point in the relationships of Lithuania and Poland, when these two quarreling neighbors became allies, was the Krewa Act of 1385, which is ambiguously interpreted by the present-day historians. This act as if merged both aspects of the previous relationship with the Poles. The undisguised desire to join the Grand Duchy of Lithuania to Poland showed the territorial aspect, while the promise of Jogaila to introduce Christianity in Lithuania reflected the religious aspect of the relationship. In 1386, Jogaila arrived in Krakow, where he was baptized as Ladislaus, married Jadwiga and was crowned the King of Poland. Both states were united by the personal act, and under the Kreva Act, Jogaila started the introduction of Christianity in Lithuania at the beginning of 1387. Gradually, a popular discontent with the Poles, recklessly strengthening their influence in the country, arose in Lithuania. Edwardas Gudavicius notes that Lithuania was not occupied, however its dukes and noblemen started to feel as second-class people in their own country. Grand Duke Vitotas of Lithuania made use of the situation. In December 1389, he started a rebellion against Jogaila and against the Polish influence in the country. The war ended with the Astrava Treaty of 1392, according to which Vitotas ruled the Grand Duchy of Lithuania on behalf of Jogaila. Thus, he became the actual ruler of Lithuania, while Jogaila remained the titular ruler. The most scandalous event in the bilateral relations was the attempt to crown Vitotas as King of Lithuania in 1430 which was ruined by the Polish nobility. The Polish-Lithuanian relationship in the post vitodas era could be described in general as continuous and rather successful efforts of the Lithuanian nobility to withstand the desire of the Polish society to see the Grand Duchy of Lithuania as part of Poland. There was a fair share of critical moments before 1569. Świdrigaila was declared the ruler of Lithuania in spite of the opinion of Jogaila or the union of Horodlo. Pro-Polish takeover of power by Sigismund Kestotaitis in 1432, the declaration of the young Casimir Jagiellonian as the Grand Duke of Lithuania in 1440, which was also done against the wish of the Poles and King Ladislaus III. In 1492, a dead wall was erected by Alexander in relations with the Poles, which persisted until he was declared the King of Poland in 1501. Lithuania and Poland grew closer mostly as a result of new political events in Europe. Since the start of the rule of Alexander, and especially during the rule of Sigismund the Old and Sigismund Augustus, wars with the Grand Duchy of Moscow became a regular phenomenon, 
and they burdened the Grand Duchy of Lithuania. In the middle of 16th century, it lost a huge part of its eastern territories. The start of the Livonian War triggered pro-Union feelings among the nobility of the Grand Duchy of Lithuania. An opportunity arose for Poland to have a Union, or at least a federal state, with Lithuania. Signed in 1569, the Union of Lublin stated that the Grand Duchy of Lithuania and Poland were united into a federal Polish-Lithuanian state, a commonwealth, and formed a single state with a single ruler, a common legislative authority, the same as seated in Warsaw, and a common foreign policy. However, both states preserved their national emblems, their territory, and their state structure, such as the treasury, laws, courts, the army, and the executive power. Also, both states represented different political units up to the end of the 18th century. The Livonian War was won, and the societies of both states comprising the Commonwealth became so close to each other that in the 18th century the Lithuanian and Polish nobilities felt as if they were a single nation. After the third partition of the Commonwealth in 1795, both the Lithuanians and the Poles became the subjects of the Russian Empire. However, the feeling of a single nation survived for quite some time. The Lithuanians and the Poles fought shoulder to shoulder in the uprisings of 1831 and 1863, directed against the Tsar. Furthermore, during the uprisings, the Lithuanian rebels acknowledged the supremacy of the authority of the Polish rebels. At the same time, the majority of Lithuanian noblemen considered themselves to be both the Poles and Lithuanians. They spoke Polish and felt as if they formed a single nation with the Polish nobility. They were faithful followers of the traditions of the union of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. The Lithuanian and Polish nobilities were also united by the Catholic faith they shared, which separated the residents of the occupied land from the occupants who were Orthodox. It was not a coincidence that the Russification policy pursued by the Russian Tsar was aimed at the destruction of the Polish seeds in Lithuania. However, both the Russians and Poles underestimated the Lithuanian peasants. The Polish factor had little influence in rural territories where the native Lithuanian language was preserved. Intellectuals of a peasant origin started voicing their opinions that the Lithuanian nation had the right to have a separate state with no ties to any other country. The national rebirth of the Lithuanians and the striving to have their own state, which was not necessarily tied to Poland, drove a wedge into the relationship between the Lithuanians and the Poles. The Lithuanian-Polish conflict was gradually growing. It was also exacerbated by the striving to Lithuanianize the Catholic Church, especially in the Diocese of Vilnius. After World War I, both Lithuania and Poland restored their statehood. They became neighbors. However, the relations did not get any better. The issue of Vilnius and the Vilnius region, that both states considered to be theirs, especially exacerbated the friction. Plans to incorporate Lithuania into the Polish state, or to form a federal state, were not forgotten. For that purpose, a coup d'état had to be staged in Lithuania by a secret Polish military organization, Polska Organizacja Wojskowa. The Lithuanian authorities arrested the conspirators, and the relations between both states worsened even more. Poland recognized Vilnius as part of Lithuania with the Treaty of Suwalki, signed on the 7th of October 1920. However, just two days later, on October the 9th of the same year, the Lithuanian Belarusian division under General Lucian Zeligowski seized Vilnius. On the 12th of October, Lucian Zeligowski proclaimed the foundation of central Lithuania. In 1922, this area was made a part of Poland. The conflict worsened further when Lithuania allowed Bolshevik Russia to use the territory of this region during the war with Poland. This diplomatic mistake of Lithuania had a long-lasting effect on bilateral relations. Diplomatic relations between Lithuania and Poland were severed until 1938. In the autumn of 1939, the Vilnius region was transferred to Lithuania by the Bolshevik USSR, pushing its way into Lithuania. The years of Soviet occupation left behind all the disagreements between the Lithuanians and the Poles. Friendly relations were established when the movement for independence started. The Sajudis liberation movement maintained good relations with the Polish Solidarność. When Lithuania restored its independence on the 11th of March 1990, Poland expressed its support on the very next day. The Polish delegation assured Lithuania that Poland had no claims regarding the Lithuanian-Polish border. 
It was to Poland that the Lithuanian foreign minister, Algirda Sodargas, moved for the purpose of forming the government in exile in January 1991, when the Lithuanian independence was seriously threatened. Poland was even expected to be the first foreign state to recognize the independence of Lithuania. However, Poland hesitated to do that. At that time, it was engaged in negotiations with the Soviet Union regarding the withdrawal of Soviet troops from Poland, while the Soviet troops still guarded the Polish-Lithuanian border. The relations between the states became somewhat colder in 1991, when the Supreme Council of Lithuania dissolved the councils of Vilnius and Szalcininke regions that supported the Soviet Union and the Moscow coup d'etat. Poland saw this as a violation of the rights of the Polish national minority in Lithuania. In April 1994, an intergovernmental treaty was signed, and the Polish-Lithuanian relations went back to being normal and friendly. At present, the Poles have more than 40 public organizations and about 100 artistic groups in Lithuania. Kurier Wilenski Daily, established in 1953, is published in Vilnius. The Lithuanian radio and television regularly broadcasts programs in the Polish language. There are also Polish schools in Lithuania, while institutions of higher education have departments of Polish linguistics. As of old, the Poles have been one of the biggest national minorities in Lithuania. In 1897, the first population census of the Russian Empire showed that Poles amounted to 10.3% of all the residents of Lithuania, except for the Klaipeda region. They were surpassed only by Jews and Russians. According to the data of the 1923 population census, the Polish residents amounted only to 3.23%. However, they were the second largest national minority after Jews. During the Soviet time, the population census of 1959 showed that the Poles, just like the Russians, amounted to 8.5% of the population. In 2001, the number of Poles was lower, they made up only 6.7%. However, with a decrease in the number of the Russians, the Poles became the largest national minority in Lithuania.